everybody, welcome back to Wow Mom Cooking. Today we're gonna to be cooking with Jack Daniels. I've got some great recipes for you from a marinade to a dessert. So grab your pens, your papers, and your aprons and let's get cooking with Wow. before we cook it. Overnight is best, at least 30 minutes will do the trick. So I already ch uh, chopped up some onions, put a little bit of olive oil and some crushed garlic on here about an hour ago and I just let them sit so they would take on that flavor. They smell delicious already. What I'm gonna add to that is I have a quarter cup of Worcestershire sauce. We'll pour that right in. And I have a third of a cup of olive oil. Get all of that in there. We're also going to add to this mix, we'll stir it just a little bit. We're gonna to add to this mix, um, this is a half cup. We're gonna put a half cup of Jack Daniels in. Now I have chosen for these recipes to use the um, Tennessee honey. It's sweeter, it has a little smoother taste and I just personally like it better. You can use anything you want. You can use the regular Jack Daniels, you can use Gentleman Jack. If you use that to cook with, you must be rich because that stuff's expensive. But we're gonna put a half a cup in here and we're gonna mix it all together. And then what I have to put into this marinade is a wonderful, beautiful chuck roast. Um, it's a prime cut, so it's a little bit uh, better cut than some of the other ones could be. Uh, you just have to find it on sale. I got it on sale, it was $3.70 a pound. Really good deal, it's about $3 off what you regularly pay for the prime cut. Now you can see what this looks like. It's kind of soupy looking, almost, and that's what we want because what we're gonna do is we're gonna put all of this into a bag, into a, zip, a big zip top bag, and we're going to put this beautiful piece of meat in there. I'm gonna show you this. I got this straight from the butcher. We've talked about that. That's what we wanna do on something like this. And you can see how great this looks. This is a beautiful piece of meat. It has nice marbling in it. It has some great uh, fat that's gonna be really good as it cooks down and add flavor to this. So I'm gonna get a zip top bag, put this in there, and we're gonna let it uh, marinate. I'll show you what that looks like. Give me just a second to grab the bag. Okay. This will fit perfectly inside a gallon bag. This steak right here is, um, of just over two pounds, it's about two and a quarter pounds, so it's enough to feed four to six people, depending on how hungry they are. Set this aside. And what we're gonna do is pour all of this in there. We wanna kinda rub it in together once we get it in there because we wanna make sure that this coats every single thing on this nice piece of meat we have here. There we go. These onions already smell delicious. Ooh, we're spilling a little. And there we go. Now you see that amount of marinade is just about right for this size steak. It gets all over it. It has a little extra to move around and to soak in. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this aside. We're gonna put it back in the refrigerator for about an hour. We're gonna let it uh, soak up all that yummy goodness. Then we'll pull it back out and dump this whole thing into our uh, Dutch oven. You can either cook it on top of the stove or you can cook it in, the, in your oven either way. So uh, we'll have this back out. Next, we're gonna go on to actually our dessert because we wanna get that going and ready. So dessert is ready when dinner is ready, okay? So we'll be right back. Okay, we are ready to make dessert and it's fabulous. What I've already done, because this is the easy part and you can do this without my help, is make a chocolate cake, uh, cake into cupcakes. They're right here, they're beautiful. I'm gonna put the recipe that I used on the website, wowmomcooking.tv. Um, we're gonna make a filling for these cupcakes and it's gonna be delicious. In these, I did put a little bit of this um, Tennessee Honey Jack Daniels, so look for that recipe. But before that, we're gonna go ahead and make the filling. And that's gonna have some of that Tennessee Honey Jack Daniels in there also, just a little bit. 
so we're going to start with two cups of very very cold whipping cream i put this in the freezer just enough to get it almost to start freezing it's kind of thick and um, i just like it really cold that way we're also going to put about um, an eighth of a cup of this coffee that i brewed um, i poured it into a quarter cup and then i have it in here because i'm going to use the other for a little bit later so i've got about an eighth of a cup of coffee in there we're going to put about a quarter cup of this Jack Daniels in there. Maybe just a little bit less. We don't want to go overboard. But this smells so delicious and it's going to be really good in this in this uh, filling. It's kind of like a frosting filling. So we've got that. We also have some mascarpone cheese that we're going to add to this also to make this an extra extra yummy cream cheese whipped cream filling. So we've got that in there. Now we need to sweeten it up, so we're going to use some powdered sugar, and we're going to spoon that in a little bit at a time. I don't want it to be too sweet, so let me get a spoon out. Before we start mixing it, we'll put a couple of tablespoons in, and we'll add a little bit as we go, and we'll have to taste it to see how it's doing. And we don't want it to be overpoweringly sweet, but we don't want it to not be sweet enough to taste like frosting either. So I'm going to set this aside. And we're going to start blending this up. And remember, it has the whipping cream in there, so it's going to get that nice fluffy texture that we like. There we go. It's going to take a couple minutes to blend, so just hang on. What we're going to do before we continue is we're going to get another spoon out. We're going to taste the sweetness and make sure we're right on. If we need to add some more, we'll add some more now. Maybe one more spoonful, but that's it. This is delicious. It's got a little bit of those flavors from everything in there. So what we're going to do is just continue to whip this up until it's ready. When it starts to get thick and starts to look ribbony or have peaks, then you know it's done. So when that's ready, we'll be back to show you what you do next. This is looking just about perfect. You can see it's thickened up and you can tell that it has kind of a ribbon look when you're mixing it. So what we're going to do now is um, scrape this down, give it one good stir and put it in the refrigerator and I'm going to show you what to do next. Be right back. Here is the fun part. These are our chocolate cupcakes and what we need to do is put some holes in them. They're going to end up looking like this. Just this is really easy to do. This is from my um, mortar and pestle. So this is my nice little tool that I'm going to use to make the holes. You turn it upside down with the small side down first, push it straight into the middle of your cupcake all the way down, and then turn it over and make the dent just a little bit bigger. Just put it in just a little bit so it's easier to get that filling in there. We're going to do that to all of these cupcakes. I'll show you one more time. Really simple. Take the small end, put it right into the center, push it all the way down, take it out, turn it over so you can make your hole on top a little bit bigger so you can get more of that filling. And voila, it's perfect. It's ready to put that uh, cream filling inside and it's going to be delicious. So we'll get that cream filling out of the refrigerator and we'll get these filled and show you how to top them off with a little bit of chocolate on top. So hang on to your hats, we'll be right back. Now we're gonna fill these fabulous cupcakes. What I did is I took that filling we made, put it into a zip top bag and I stuck it in the freezer for five minutes. So we're taking it out right now. You especially wanna do that on a hot day like it is right now. We are going to squeeze this into our cupcakes. It's going to be awesome. So we're going to get it ready. Make sure you don't make the hole too big because then you're going to get tons of this out at once. So what we're going to do is just get this right over the top, squeeze it in there, and have a little bit come out over the top so it'll, it'll go over the top of it. We're going to put these back into the refrigerator because these are defi definitely like a refrigerator cake because of the filling. Okay, one more. Okay, and our last step on these cupcakes is we are going to shave a little bit of chocolate on top of there too. This is just a regular dark chocolate bar. We're going to use one of our microplaners to get some of that on top, make these look fabulous, and they're going to taste delicious. 
Now one note I have to tell you guys, because we didn't cook this filling, these cupcakes are not good for the kids. You can make the same filling without the uh, Tennessee honey, and those would be great for the kids, or just use some regular frosting because they can eat the cupcake, the alcohol has been cooked out. So I'm going to put these in the fridge, and put, we're going to have these for dessert with our fabulous chuck roast and our rice and everything else, so we'll see you in a little bit. Okay, now that we have our dessert out of the way and ready to go, we are ready to put this fabulous uh, chuck roast into our Dutch oven and get it cooking. So I've got it right here. I always use cast iron. And what we're going to do is just take this bag and dump the entire contents in here. Oh, that smells so good. Now I'm going to cook this on the stove top, so I'm going to put it on a low flame put the lid on top of it and just check on it as it goes about, oh, probably every 15 minutes I'll give it a look just to make sure. You can see how fabulous that looks and I'm telling you it smells great too. This is going to be a delicious dinner. I'm going to get it on the oven and we'll be back to show you what our side dish is going to be. On to our side dish. We are going to make a Borio Italian grown rice. If you don't know what that is, you have to brown it up a little bit before you add any liquid to it. So the first thing we're going to do is put four tablespoons of butter into our pan. Let that melt down. It also needs a little bit of olive oil. Let me get my measuring spoons out. Need a couple tablespoons of olive oil. There we go. And that's going to melt down and what we're going to do is to this we're going to add some chopped onions and two slices of chopped up bacon as well. It's going to make this del dish delicious. You're going to love this. So I'm going to go ahead and put the bacon in. I've already chopped it up. You can hear it sizzle a little bit. That's great. Okay. Uh, forgot my spoon. Let me get that. There we go. Everything's melting and smelling good already. Okay. The recipe on these bags always says use a wooden spoon. I use a wooden spoon. I don't know why, but that's what it says. So we're going to put a medium onion, diced fine, and we're going to cook this onion and bacon and everything until the onions are clear. So uh, that way they're all ready and soft and, and good to go when we add in that rice. So. Oh, this smells good already. What I'm also going to do at this point, because we're doing a Jack Daniels theme, is we're going to add our Jack Daniels now. Make sure that all the alcohol gets cooked out and all we have is a little bit of that flavor. So all we're going to do is we're going to put just a splash in this time. We just want everything to kind of go together and get those flavors from all of the things we're having for dinner in this. So just a little splash. Perfect. Oh, that smell is delicious. I'm telling you, you're going to like this. It's going to add a little bit of caramelization to these onions too as they cook. Now I always get my bacon from the butcher. I don't buy it prepackaged, and the reason being is if you really look at it, it doesn't tend to be any more expensive to buy it from the butcher. It's fresher. You get um, as much as you want. You can get a half a pound. You can get two pounds. You don't have to buy a one-pound package. And also, you can tell him if what he's pulling out, you don't like the way it looks, tell him pull it from a different section. It's the best way to get it. So these onions are cooking up nicely. It's just going to take a couple more minutes. We'll keep stirring and keep everything going while we do this. And while this is going, I'm going to show you what the uh, rice we're going to use is. Um, some of you have probably seen this before. You get this in kind of a rice aroni mix where you have to put butter in the pan and saute it up first. That's exactly what this is, but it's got no flavorings. It has nothing on it. We're going to add everything yummy to this. So that's it. There's a cup and a half of this rice. We're going to put a cup and a, half, a cup and a quarter of uh, broth instead of water to add more flavor that way. We had four tablespoons of butter, we had two slices of bacon, and we had uh, three tablespoons of olive oil, and then we had a splash of our Tennessee honey whiskey. 
this right here smells so good. There's so many things you could do with this base besides adding that rice. This would make a good hot dip if you add, if uh, after you're done cooking it down, you add it to some cream cheese and some sp add, put some spinach in here. Oh, that would be a good idea. Oh, you guys are going to like this, I'm sure. It's got a few more minutes, so we're just going to let it keep cooking down. Those onions have to get clear and translucent before they're ready to move on to the next step. So it's going to be just a minute. This is starting to look and smell delicious. The onions are cooking just about right. The bacon's crisping up. And at this point, we're going to put in that rice because it needs to get a little bit of a brown on it too. So what we're going to do is just go ahead and shake this on in. We're going to stir it up real good and we're going to let it get a little bit of all those flavors in there and brown up a little bit before we add our liquids into it. Make sure you give a good scrape to the bottom of your pan so that you get anything, any of those little crusty, caramelized pieces into all of your food. Makes it even more delicious. We'll do that again once we add the, the uh, liquids too. So here we go. Oh. Now I don't know if you can hear it, but it's got a little sizzle going on. These things are going to start to get a little bit brown, and as soon as they do, then we're going to add that liquid in. You can kind of see that butter and oil bubbling in there. Oh, it's going to be great. Okay, this is going to take just a couple minutes. We're going to keep stirring while we do it. And you want to make sure you keep an eye on your heat too. We don't want it to get too hot. So if you're at pan seems to get a little bit too hot, it's cooking things a little bit too fast, just turn your heat down a little. It's okay. So here we go. Oh. I think that I should have made a double batch on this because I'm telling you, this is going to go really fast. I'm going to turn my heat down just a tiny bit. Don't want it to overcook any of this stuff and make it super crispy, except maybe the bacon, which is getting there already. Okay. You'll be surprised. You'll be stirring this, and all of a sudden, this will start turning to a golden, beautiful color and just be absolutely delicious. Now, I keep spreading it out over the pan. You can see that. I do that so that it, it cooks a little faster and it gets a little bit, you get more of those pieces to get all those flavors in there and get a little brown. Now you can see the whole pan is starting to turn a little bit of that golden brown now. And in about another minute or so, what we're gonna do is add in all those liquids and it's gonna sit and simmer for the next 20 minutes and cook everything up in there and be the best side dish you've ever had. So you can start to see it's just about good. We're, anyway, I think we're just about ready. We're gonna go ahead and add those liquids in. So I have a cup and a quarter of some chicken broth. This is our cup. And we've got another quarter cup right here we're gonna add in. That should be just about right. We're gonna sit here, we're gonna let this uh, start to get a little bit of a bubble on it, a little a kind of a boil. Then we'll turn it down so that it simmers for the next 20 minutes. So we're going to stir this all in real good, scraping the bottom again, make sure we get all those flavors that are on the bottom from the onions and the bacon and that awesome whiskey we added to it. Uh, whiskey. We added our beautiful Tennessee honey. Not just any plain old thing. This smells really good. Okay, we're going to get it all spread out all over the pan again. As soon as we do that, we're going to turn the heat down, let it simmer a little bit. It's going to simmer for 20 minutes. We're going to stir it occasionally, just keeping our eyes on it. And we're also going to keep our eyes on our roast that we have in, um, we have on the stovetop. So we'll check on that. We'll keep checking on this. And in just a little bit, we're going to have a completed delicious, delicious meal. So see you in just a few. Okay, our rice should be just about done. Let's take the lid off. And you do want to cover it in case I forgot to tell you. Look at that. That's perfect. The rice has soaked up all that uh, vegetable broth or chicken broth we put in there. It's got all the butter and olive oil in there. We're going to give it a scrape on the bottom and get any of those extra little goodies that are down there. Stir it up. We're going to get some of our uh, chuck roast out of the pot. We're going to get our cupcakes out. And we're going to be ready to have some dinner. 
probably slice up a few tomatoes to have with this and that'll make it a perfectly balanced delicious meal so we'll see you in a few minutes when we're all ready to eat our dinner we have our completed Jack Daniels Tennessee honey dinner. We've got a great chuck roast that we cooked with that marinade with that in there. We've got our rice that it's in. We have our dessert, our chocolate cupcakes with filling that has it in there. And I made myself a little drink. Use this new Cast Cal natural soft drink and added a, uh, just a little bit of that Tennessee honey in there for a delicious flavor. I've got some bread and tomato salad we added to our dinner for a complete meal and I am ready to start digging in. I want to tell you thanks for hanging with Wow Mom again and until I see you next time, keep on cooking with Wow.